my name is uh, Michael Lavin, Senior Conservator for the Jamestown Rediscovery Project, and we're here at the DeWitt Wallace Collections and Conservation Building at Colonial Williamsburg to get the wood ID'd from the pistol. Uh, my name is Chris Swan, I'm Furniture Conservator at Colonial Williamsburg Foundation, and today we're going to be looking at uh, some wood identification to aid in uh, trying to better understand the woods that are found uh, at Jamestown. In particular, uh, the pistol that was found. Uh, and I have a sample or two of the wood with me. And what we're going to do is uh, do a little bit of wood identification by taking some thin sections uh, from the samples and trying to identify the microscopic characteristics to draw some conclusions about the type of wood uh, that that pistol is made of. I need a thin, thin section. So the next cut will be with any luck, that little bit is a thin section. With archaeological wood, it's so soft and so friable, you can't really slice as thinly as you'd like to with a hard uh, wood that's intact. So you have to kind of in order not to just um, crush it all together, you have to kind of gauge for something that's a little thicker than you'd like normally. And then I want to wash it off onto my slide here. And then I can just I can check that in close-up scope before I go over to analytical scope, Let's see if I have something. This is actually an infrared um, microscope, uh, Fourier Transform Infrared, uh, FTIR, um, it's short, short for Fourier Transform Infrared, and it has both uh, infrared objectives and the uh, optical objectives both, so I'm just using it with the light, transmitted light in the optical objectives for this particular uh, wood identification. So I've got uh, a 10x objective here, and I'm just going to see if I can zero in on this a little bit. Wow, this is a great section. Who took this one? <laughs> Check that out. Clear. It's pretty thick, but with enough light, you can you can get uh, some of the features coming through. So you see the rays coming at you. Mm -hmm. So now we can count how many cells high those rays are, how many wide, if any at all. So we can clearly identify, in this case, the structure of these intervessel pits as being alternate. <clears throat> and so that's another feature um, that we can add alternate intervessel pitting. Simple perforation plates raise one to three seriate, six to eight cells high, uh, and the rays are heterogeneous. Uh, what does this microscopic point tell you to different wood types? What does it include and exclude? Um, I have to go back to the books at this point and sort of go through um, some of those choices. I don't remember all of them. Mm -hmm. um, but it would certainly exclude the, uh, all of the ring porous woods, for example, in a very gross um, kind what are, of way. What are some examples of ring porous woods? Um, like oak and ash, hickory, um, chestnut, um, all of those kind of woods are okay. completely out. And you can tell by looking at um, the wood even by eye, I think, yeah. in that case. But this confirms um, this is a diffuse porous wood, so that means a very dense, uh, closely grown cellular structure very solid. The other woods that are similar I think we can rule out by any number of features that we're not seeing. So for example the holly, the ilex has opposite interfessal pitting, we can rule that out. The maple has um, a homogeneous cell structure, we can rule that out. The cherry has all the features that we've seen um, and Based on the other similar woods that are that are fairly common, um, it, it would uh, 
I would conclude that it's one of the cherries or one of the prunus groups.